So welcome to the Shape It Up podcast today, and I am so thrilled to have a special guest today. Christy Lingo is the professional organizer turned business coach for moms and is also the host of Cocktails and Containers podcast. So welcome, Christy. I am so thrilled that you are here. And we actually met sort of, quote unquote, like two years ago, I think it was, and we signed up for a, um, do a video, a YouTube video every day. And I thought it was interesting because there was only like a few people that I connected with and you were one of them. And um, the people that I met, I still am in touch with, which is, I find so fascinating because it was like the internet you know, this random thing that we all did. (laughs) (laughs) And it just kind of, I know for me, it launched me more on YouTube. How about you? Was that? Oh yeah, it was so fun. And I think one of the reasons that I really connected with you is that I felt like we were on very similar paths. You know, we were both women in our near 40s or 40s. <laughs> I'm, I'm 43 now, so I think I must have just been turning 40. I have a couple years on you. That's okay. <laughs> but, you know, and that we were both business owners, that we are in a service-based industry. And I think that that's kind of why I was drawn to you in your videos was that I could see a little bit of myself of sort of like, the struggles of running a business and sort of having a life and all this kind of stuff. So um, I know that that was one of the reasons why I really like, and I do, I love the fact that it has been, I think it'll be like three years maybe yeah. in August and we've kept up with each other on, yeah. <laughs> on the social media since then. So it's been really fun. Yeah. So it's nice. Cause I don't think we've ever talked like face to face. So just yeah. On social media. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I find technology just is fascinating that like we can have these conversations and I know you're not too far, but in the United States, but like, I mean, you can talk to people halfway around the world and it's, it's just mind boggling. Like for our kids that are growing up, like they don't understand, like, like I always joke with them when you have to watch a TV show, like when we were growing up, it was like, you no, you had to sit in front of the TV at 7 PM or you didn't watch it. <laughs> My kids are confused by commercials because they watch everything on like Netflix and they're like, they watch it on, they watch a football game or something like that. They're like, oh, when's the football game going to be back? What is this thing that's on here right now? So yeah, right. I, completely, I can completely get that. Now, how old are your boys? Cause they, they are, are six and eight. So okay. this is the first year that they've both been in school. So I feel like it's oh. been a real eye opener for me as far as my time and my businesses, because I'm like, oh, wow, I, ha- I have some time. If I don't have clients, I-, I have time to do things for myself, which is really weird. Yes. I remember when my kids started school and I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how much time you have. Um, okay. So just a quick, I know you're shifting into a new business, but how did you start your organizing business? What made you decide to do that? Well, when my husband and I first started talking about having kids, I knew that the job that I was working in at that point in time wasn't going to be really conducive to like having babysitters because there was times when I would have to be into work at like four or five o'clock in the morning. I was an artist at a grocery store, which I would have to go in Hmm. early to set up displays and things like that before the store would open. And, you know, I don't know about about where you are, but babysitters aren't real keen at coming to your house at like 3.30 <laughs> or 4 o'clock in the morning because he right. also worked for the same line, uh, the same chain of grocery stores and would have to be to work early. So okay. um, also, I when I thought about being a mom, like I didn't want to be locked into a job where I had some inflexibility as far as being able to go to school for Valentine's day parties or Mm. being able to take time out to take them, you know, on a field trip or something like that. And that was something that was just really important to me. So I started kind of exploring what I could do to make money and be an entrepreneur, which at the time, like I, I think back and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like I had zero business experience. (laughs) I went to school for acting when I was in college. Like I I look back and I'm like, what was I even thinking? But I just like jumped in and found some YouTube videos and some blog posts and, you know, found out how to start my business. And, um, you know, I kind of sat down one day and wrote out a list of things that, I thought I was good at or that I would enjoy making money doing. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be around the same time that my husband and I were moving into our first house and we moved in on a Tuesday. And on Saturday night, we had a bunch of people over for like a cookout and people were like walking around my house. They're like, um, 
how did you <laughs> already unpack all your boxes? And I was like, oh, well, you know, when I packed them up, I labeled them and then I made sure that I knew exactly where they were going and I unloaded them. And my friend Kate was like, oh my gosh, you should be a professional organizer. And that was like two months before I even started all this exploratory work. And then it sort of like popped back into my head. Long story short, I went to a meeting of the National Association of Professional Organizers and I knew that I had found my tribe. Like, mm. I just really enjoyed, at the time it was all women that were there. I know there's some men that are in there now, but it just felt like a good fit. And that was in 2009 that mm. I started that business. And I worked primarily with moms. My target market was to work with moms who needed to set the reset button. You know, like, mm. I don't know how you were before kids, but like, I had it together and then it kind of all fell apart and then I kind of <laughs> got it back together again. And I feel like it gives me a good empathy with my clients that I, that I kind of went on that journey with them. And that was really, really wanted to do was give moms back that peace of mind or those systems that they had had in place that maybe needed some tweaking or that weren't working quite as well once they had kids. And, mm -hmm. and that's really what I've been focusing on with my organizing business. So the pivot kind of, kind of came about when I um, was getting a lot of questions from moms that were like, I really want to start a business or I have this business and I just don't know what to be doing. Mm. Uh, can you help me start a business or can you help me, you know, with marketing? Can you help me, you know, how have you been successful? All of these kinds of things. And I realized that there was a real need out there that there were these moms that wanted to be entrepreneurs that needed help figuring out where to spend their time or mm -hmm. how to balance everything in their homes because, you know, having a business takes a lot of time, but you also don't want to take so much time away from your family that you're ignoring them. Because a lot of times the reason you're starting the business is so that you can spend more time with your family. Right. Right. Yeah. I was like that when I started Shape It Up and I found myself, like my husband even made a comment because I was so busy trying to market and everything. And my poor kids, they get, they got drug with me whenever I would market. Um, it was actually kind of funny because I remember going into a place and I was like holding my breath because I have one, my son is very calm and like he follows the rules. My daughter, complete opposite. <laughs> and <laughs> we went in and I never knew what she was going to do. Like he would go in and be like, hello, my name is Victor and this is my mom. And she's going to talk to you about boot camps because that's what I did back then. And my daughter was just like, blah, like, <laughs> right. let's look at this paper. Let's pull this out. And I, and I mean, but they knew, you know, that's what I needed to do to market. But um, yeah, it was very time consuming. And um, I think that's the process when you first start because you have to, it, it's great when you have a coach that can kind of streamline all that for you. Um, same thing with weight loss, same thing with organizing, like take advantage of coaches because they've been there, they have the experience. And even if you're like only a couple steps ahead of them, you're still ahead of them and you can help them out. 100%, I cannot say enough that accountability and coaches are like the best investment that you can make in yourself, whether it is like you said, whether it is starting a business or it is fitness or it is, you know, getting yeah. your home in order, having that person that is an expert, but that mm -hmm. also can see things from the outside and be like, Hey, maybe you should do it this way and help you. I mean, it, it will save you so much time. I actually just was talking with uh, a friend a couple days ago and the idea that time is money kept coming up. And this mm -hmm. idea that we spend so much time spinning our wheels, whether it's our diet or our homes or our business, we spend so much time spinning wheels when there are people out there that can help us cut corners and do things faster and not, not necessarily faster. You still have to put the time and the effort in, but that will save us all the like, tried this, oops, didn't work. Try this, mm -hmm. oops, didn't work. You know, they can really help us to solidify a plan. And so I cannot get behind coaching more. It's, it's so, so important. Yeah, I totally agree. And not only like that, but when you're new, I think there's a lot of, um, ambiguity, like, like you're not really sure what you should do and that kind of holds you back and like just kind of having a sounding board too, I think helps to just, you know, be like, okay, am, is this, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? <laughs> like, am I on the right track? A hundred percent. Yeah, it is so good. And I think too, like we get really excited when we first start things, whether it's, you know, so I am, um, I'm currently training to run a half marathon mm -hmm. and 
I have been very cognizant of sticking to just what the training program is that I have and not sort of like, even though I'm like really excited and like, oh, I'm going to do some weightlifting today and all this, <laughs> I, you know, adding all this stuff in because I think at the beginning, we often like to jump in and do more because we're excited and we have the energy. But what can happen is either that'll burn us out mm -hmm. or it will like injure us or, you know, like we do too many different things when we start a business and we get exhausted and then we stop doing everything and then we're not doing anything, you know? Right, and right. Think, yeah, it's so true. So like, even though you're really excited at the beginning, having somebody that can be like, okay, slow your roll a little bit, like let's back up, let's right. essential, <laughs> let's not get an injury or let's not exhaust ourselves. Like let's sort of stick to the plan and then we'll add as we go along. Right, right. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Um, so how does your business work? Like, do you go to people's houses? I know you offer great advice. I know I see you on Instagram all the time and I love your posts because they're always, some humor is in it. Um, whether you're lip syncing or, <laughs> uh, what was the other, oh, balloon animals, right? <laughs> oh yeah. I, I try not to take myself too seriously, but yeah, when I'm working with clients, I go into their homes. I, a lot of it is really about how they work and how their minds work. Like not mm -hmm. everybody's brain works the same mm -hmm. when it comes to organizing. Like some people want everything by color. Some people want everything alphabetized. You know, mm -hmm. when you go in to do a pantry, some people want it by meal. So these are the things I eat for lunch. Oh. These are the things I eat for breakfast. These are the things I eat for dinner. Or some people want all the grains together and some people want all the baking supplies together. You know, it really is very individualized. So you have to, you can't go in with this idea that I'm just going to do everything. Or when people send me a Pinterest picture, they're like, I want my, my pantry to look like this. I'm like, oh, well, it's not exactly, <laughs> that's not exactly how it works. Like, yeah, we can make it look like that, but it really is individualized and it is about, and I, and I feel like this is probably very relative to what you do too, where it's not just the, the first thing that you do, but the maintenance of that system that you put in place is so, so important. And if you make something too complicated or you do something mm. that doesn't work with your schedule or the way that your brain operates when it comes to organizing your closet or your pantry or, you know, your basement, you're not going to stick with it. And yeah. so it really is about getting to know the people, how they learn, how they work, what kind of time they have to put into maintaining this kind of stuff. And then we create a plan and move forward from there. Mm. Yeah. And I think things have to be functional. Like, cause I know like my husband will put something somewhere and I'm like, well, why would you put it there? Cause the way his brain works, that makes sense to him. But I'm like, no, oh, doesn't work for me. <laughs> we got to put it back over here. <laughs> right. Labels and compromise are very important when you're organizing in a marriage. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I was going to ask you about your half marathon, but you already brought that up. Um, how is that going with training? Because you're very busy. You have, you said you have two businesses, right? Two you have businesses, two, two boys. Kids. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm in a very intensive business coaching program, which requires me to do some work every day and then the half marathon. But I think it comes down to, again, the reason why people were coming to me and saying, Hey, how are you getting all of this stuff done? Mm -hmm. Is I'm very cognizant of priorities. I mm. really make time for the things that are important. And I know that we were kind of joking around a little bit before we started recording about like, I don't have time to work out. Yeah. And that was something that I realized, you know, at the end of last year, I wasn't making the time to work out because I wasn't making it a priority. And so I, I actually had pneumonia at the end of last year. I saw, and one yeah. Of the, yeah. One of the things that I wanted to do to sort of get myself healthy again was to get myself back in shape. So I've made it a priority to train for this half marathon. Now, I am not fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am, uh, I might have to walk at times, but <laughs> okay. gosh darn it, I have done every single run that I've needed to do so far. And then on the off days, they recommend some sort of um, non-weight bearing cross training. So I've been doing yoga because I, again, I'm 43 and I'm running like five, six miles. Yeah, you're running my a lot. Body's like, <laughs> yeah. My what body's are you like, doing? <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm going from being sick for like six weeks and not doing anything to, you know, like now I think I did, uh, I did five miles on last Sunday. So that was, that was a lot for my body. Yeah. But I'm making the time I sit down on either Sunday night or Monday morning. And I write in my calendar when I'm going to do my runs, you know, I, I know approximately how long it's going to take me Right. To do that. So I make sure that I schedule that in based around, you know, the clients that I have and the coaching calls that I have, um, you know, and all the other things that I'm doing. 
And, um, you know, again, it just comes down to, I've made it a priority. It's, it's important for me to get my body back to being healthy again after being so sick last year. Yeah. And, and so I think that anything that you want to do, whether it is organizing your house or sort of like getting control of your finances, all of these things, if you make it a priority and you set aside the time to do it, you will actually do it. You put it on your calendar, you make it an appointment with yourself, mm-hmm. you get some sort of an accountability buddy. So I, that's part of the reason why I've been blasting it out to the world that I'm training <laughs> for this thing, because if for some reason I stop showing up doing my runs, I want somebody to, in my DMs on Instagram to be like, um, you're not doing your runs <laughs> or I noticed that you stopped at nine out of 36. What's going mm, on? Like I yeah. want somebody to call me on it because I, so that's kind of what keeps me going is I have that accountability. I have those people that are like, we know that you're doing this. We care about you. We know it's important to you and we want to make sure that you stick with it. Right. Right. So did you pick a marathon? Or half I'm, marathon to do? Yeah, I'm doing the Cap City. It's here in Columbus, so I'm oh, in Columbus, right. Ohio, mm-hmm. and it is the last weekend of April. So, um, yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's fine. I, you know, like I said, I, I, I have a training program. This is actually the fourth half marathon that I've run. I've done four, or I've done three halves, a quarter, and a full. I will never do a full again. <laughs> that was just lunacy. The people out there, God bless them that do those all the time. That was just a little, that was a little too much for me. But um, this is the first one that I have done um, in eight years. So oh, wow. it's, okay. definitely, it's definitely um, uh, a different, it's first one in my forties. It's yeah. the first one post children. So yeah. my body's a little different now. Yeah. Yeah. But not, it, not, un, not undoable. I don't think that's the right word. Oh. Not, <laughs> it's totally doable. It is. Totally yeah. doable. And you know, like I love the training program that I'm doing because it's all about like, if you got to walk, walk. In fact, it even gives mm-hmm. you like a breakdown, like run three minutes, walk two, run three, yeah. walk two. And, and it's all about, it's just about knowing that you can do it and, and getting the workouts in, you know, if you have to walk the whole way, you have to walk. It's fine. That's right. 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 I think it's more about like, you know, like you were saying about making sure it's a priority for sure. Like we all have 24 hours in the day, no matter what you do and you get to decide how you want to choose to use those 24 hours. And, um, I know, like, I know we were talking, like a lot of people come to me and they're like, well, I just don't have time. And I'm like, yeah, but okay. Take another person who's on the same like track as you and they're able to do it. So what's the difference, you know, like, and like exactly what you said, it's priorities. But I think too, um, as you go through it, cause I know I did a Disney run, it was a 10 K and I'm not a runner. Um, and if you listen to the podcast, uh, a couple ago with Dave, he's a big runner <laughs> and he's done marathons and all this stuff. And I'm just like, for me, 26 miles, I just think mentally that's, that's too much time with myself. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, and especially the training because the training is intense. I mean, it's like, you know, you're, you're by yourself for quite a while. <laughs> it is. It is. Now you only train up to 20 miles when you do the full marathon. Well, at least I did when I did my full marathon, but yeah, that's Still, why I like half marathons. Yeah. It, you, you train up to 10 miles. That's usually about an hour and a half of running for me. I can spend that much time with myself, but I agree. Yeah. Like after that, I start to like, maybe, yeah. maybe do something. <laughs> but you know, what I've been doing is I do two runs a week listening to music and one run I've started listening to like longer podcasts mm. and I don't run as fast, mm-hmm. but it's sort of like I get uninterrupted time to listen to things that I enjoy without my kids bothering yes. me or my clients texting me. It's kind of yeah. nice. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree. Like I, yeah. So when I work out, I listen to podcasts most of the time. Um, yeah. And as, if you want to check out, if you like inspirational though, side note, he curses a lot, but David Goggins. Okay. I am just like, he's like a Navy SEAL guy. He's definitely on the extreme side. But if I feel like if I can take like a little bit of what he's talking about, awesome. <laughs> like I'll an addict. So yeah, I have to check it out. Um, okay. So you have a book on Amazon. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I wrote this a couple years back because again, I try to listen to what people are, are asking me. And I had a lot of moms coming to me saying, how do I stop all these cluttery gifts from coming into my house? Because as a mom with young kids, a lot of my mom friends had young kids. They just felt like they were completely overwhelmed. And 
again, it kind of goes back to that maintenance idea where you can declutter all weekend, but then all of a sudden, if you sort of ignore it, birthdays come around or Christmas comes mm. around or, you know, gosh, my, my sister bought a bunch of presents for her kids for Valentine's Day. I'm like, oh no, don't let my kids <laughs> see that picture. <laughs> they got heart-shaped cinnamon rolls. Like that's Oh, wow. Got. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, we really have to control to some extent, what comes in. And if we can get a handle on what comes in, then we can sort of maintain all this effort that we put into organizing and decluttering our houses. And not only did I realize as I started to put together this list of clutter-free gift ideas, that it's going to be something that's not going to clutter up your home, but there's actually research out there that says that giving experience gifts Mm. can is good for your mental well-being. Mm-hmm. It's good for your relationships. To be honest, this half marathon that I'm running, my husband asked me what I wanted for Christmas. He bought me the shoes. I actually went and got fitted for shoes nice. for the first time in my life. And mm-hmm. he paid for my entrance fee into the half marathon. Oh, so cool. it was a clutter-free gift that he gave me. And look at the benefit that it's having. Oh, Not yeah. only on me, but now if I happen to inspire somebody through my Instagram page that is like, you know what? If she can do it, maybe I can go run a 5K or I can right. run a 10k or something like that you're but, inspiring you know, your kids too oh yeah because your sure. kids in are fact, yeah in fact my uh my eight-year-old ran with me up until i got to three miles once oh, i got cool. past three miles he he that was a little too much for yeah. him but i'm yeah. hoping that as it gets warmer and my distances get longer maybe they can ride their bikes along with me there you um, go or pull you along near. whatever yeah <laughs> 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 put a wagon on the back of one of right <laughs> But yeah, the, so the idea is just that it, not everything has to be clutter free, but this idea that if you can sort of replace a certain percentage of what comes into your house with experiences or consumable gifts or practical gifts, you'll start to notice that you have less clutter around the house. And, you know, you may notice that your relationships get better because you're spending time doing experiences with people. That right. You love. Right. Yeah. And I always find too, like the kids, especially when they were younger, I mean, my kids are I got one that's going to be 13 next week and the other one's going to be 15 in a couple months. And when they were little, you know, they'd get these huge toys and everything and they would play with the box. And I'm like, (laughs) come on, like, why do we need, but yeah. So, and as they're getting older, you know, I feel like it's harder to shop for them because, you know, what do you give them? Because they're, they're very, at least my kids are very streamlined. You know, it's like video games or like, like my son likes to play golf and that kind of thing. Um, my daughter likes stuffed animals, which we could go on a whole <laughs> other topic about stuffed animals. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's like, why do like, I forget where we were, but my kids were like, oh, we need to get a gift. And I was like, well, why do you need a gift? Like what, where did this come from that we always need to feel like we are giving gifts? Like, why can't we give an experience or something like that? Like, so for my boys, uh, we don't typically do like birthday presents for our kids. Mm -hmm. We, um, we do a trip. Their birthdays are July 22nd and April 3rd, or I'm sorry, August 3rd. So there's just like a couple weeks in between. So for instance, last year we went to Mammoth Cave camping and that was their birthday present. Like they decided that they wanted to go someplace that they hadn't been before. They wanted to go to a state that they hadn't been to. So we hadn't been Mm -hmm. to Kentucky and we went and did this and we didn't get souvenirs while we were there. Like the, the trip was the gift. Right. Again, like this is what they've known. So it's a lot easier for me because we've been sort of putting this idea of experience gifts for birthdays and places we were born. But I also think we don't give kids enough credit when we do make a shift like this. Like if you said, you know what, instead of buying a bunch of gifts for Christmas this year, we're going to go skiing or we're going to go stay in a cabin over New Year's or something like that. I don't think we give kids enough credit to think that yeah, they might complain and Christmas morning might come around and they might be like, this is stupid. Right. But give it five years or, you know, give it some time to see it. And, and I think that they'll really enjoy it. They'll enjoy those experiences because I know that my grandparents took me to an amusement park when I was growing up. And I still remember that. Like I was like eight years mm. old and that's what I got in lieu of a birthday gift. I still remember that. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We did that when we were little too. Like I remember the big talk was always like, we did this one trip. This will show you how old I am in a station wagon <laughs> from <laughs> New Jersey across the the United States. And uh, we wound up in Oregon. I'm assuming we came back in the station wagon at some point, (laughs) but I was like seven and I do remember some things, but um, I mean, that was a huge thing in our family, like trips and, and having that experience. And even though there were, I'm sure we were fighting because there were four of us total kids and my grandparents and my parents in a station wagon. um, 
but yeah, that experience is going to live on. And you, like you said, yeah, the kids are going to be like, oh, do you remember when? They're not going to be like, oh, do you remember when I got this little car? That it <laughs> right. Broke in that two weeks. going to go to the Goodwill in a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive into, oh wait, before we dive into the topic, where can they get your book? Yeah, you can grab it on Amazon if you just search for 101 Clutter-Free Gifts and Why You Want Them. And yeah, you should pick it up. It is a quick and easy read. It's on Kindle or it's uh, in book form. But I made it because I know that busy moms don't have time for a lot of fluff. So it's supposed to be quick, easy, (laughs) and it's got a great gift list in there for you to choose from. Good, good. Now, I have to say before we get into today's topic is um, I will never forget the one tip that you gave me. And I'm telling you, it was like a life life saver for me. It was when you pack up your Christmas gifts or not gifts, your Christmas decor that you put them in certain bins with the label of like the room that they were in. I am no lie. Like, that has been a game changer for me. <laughs> I'm <laughs> because, so glad to hear that. <laughs> we have a large house, and so I have different things that I like in different areas. And before, I would put everything on the dining room table, and then I would just put them in bins and put them downstairs. And then after I got that tip, I was like, oh, I'm totally trying this. And so the following year, I did. I put everything kind of, you know, it wasn't exactly perfect, but it was like close enough. And the next year, I was like, running around trying to do my business stuff. And I was like, well, I want to decorate for Christmas. And I was like, Ooh, I'm going to pull up the dining room bin and just decorate the dining room. And then the next day I would pull up the next room and just decorate. And it was so nice because I was like, didn't have to figure out where whatever little snowman I had was in some other bin that wasn't labeled (laughs) or anything like that. So it was so helpful. Well, I came up with it when I was pregnant for my second child and I was so sick and it was basically, uh, as I was putting things up, I'm like, this stinks. Like if I'm ever like this miserable around Christmas again, I don't, I want to be able to just pull out a bin that has like the stockings and the tree decorations and be done with it. And Mm. so it was because of that, that that's how I took it down that year is Mm. I was like, I put all the stuff from the living room and all the stuff from the family room and all the stuff from the kitchen into their own separate bins. And then the next year when I, when I went to decorate, I was like, this works really well. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. So let's get into organizing after work. So yeah. any tips you have for so the I, ladies? Yeah. So as you come home from work, you're tired. One thing that I really want to encourage you to do is come up with how you're going to feed your family that night. It can be super duper simple. So on my podcast, I interviewed um, Sally Kazemchek, who's from a site called Real Mom Nutrition. And mm-hmm. she just takes a post-it note and writes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then what you're going to eat and sticks it on her fridge. Like it can be that simple and you don't mm-hmm. even have to stick with it, but mm-hmm. you know, for instance, we always have Friday pizza night and, you know, Tuesdays, we usually have mac and cheese because my husband works late, (laughs) but you know, like anything that you can do to take your brain out of it, because how many of us have had the, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. What Mm. do you want for dinner? And I feel like that leads you to buy food that's expensive because you buy like easy prep food at the grocery store or you get takeout, you know, you might end up eating pizza four days a week Yeah, <laughs> not good for your health. But even if it's just a matter of like every Monday, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a frozen meal. Every Tuesday, we're going to have salad and meat. Every Wednesday, we're going to have spaghetti. It can be so simple, but as much as you can do to offload your evening activities from your brain is going to buy you time and sanity when it comes Mm. to after work and being organized and being able to spend time with your family. So my first tip is to make sure that you have some sort of plan in place to feed your family. (laughs) (laughs) The second thing that I want to recommend that you do is sort of less is more. So we've been talking a lot earlier about decluttering and organizing. And I really want to stress to you that as busy moms, you know, if you're working or even if you're home all day with your kids, but you know, we've got a lot on our plates and if it takes you an hour to clean up the toy room or you're picking up your kids, your, your teenager's bedroom and, or you're doing laundry and putting it all away, there is so much stuff 
in our mm-hmm. houses. Mm-hmm. And it, when you start to pare down the amount of stuff that you have, you're going to spend less time you know, doing the laundry and putting it away, or you're going to spend less time picking up the toys or putting the dishes away or going through the pantry or writing your grocery list. Anytime you have less, it's going to make it so much easier to get all these tasks done. So one thing that I was talking with a friend about the one day, she was like, I feel like the laundry is never done. Yes. And I was like, (laughs) if everything was clean in your house, could you put it all away in your drawers? And she was like, probably not. Mm -hmm. And she's like, and that's part of the reason why it lives in her laundry baskets is because she doesn't have room to put it away. So she keeps it in the laundry basket. Well, then it feels very cluttery because she has all this stuff. And then you 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 can't determine, you know, is it dirty? Is it clean? What's in this thing? How long has it been sitting here? Do I have to iron it? (laughs) Sniff test, right? (laughs) Yes. And I challenged her. I was like, what if you pared down your drawers to the point where you could actually put things away? Because what's going to happen is you're going to have to do that laundry because you're going to run out of underwear. You're going to run out of socks. You're going to run out of jeans or whatever. You're going to have to do it and put it away. The other thing is have less laundry baskets because you're going to need Mm. that laundry basket. So again, this idea that less is more, if you have less clothes, you can actually put it away when you're done because and it's going to take you less time because you're not going to be shoving and pushing mm-hmm. and trying to get everything in there. The other thing is if you have less laundry baskets, you're going to have to put it away <laughs> because you're going to need that laundry basket for something else. So again, yeah. this no, less is good. more is going to perpetuate things. And the third thing that I really want to recommend to, and this is the thing that like some, I get some pushback from mama's on is involve the rest of your family. You do not have to do it all. And this kind of goes back to this idea of, I don't have time to work out, or I don't have time to meal plan, or I don't have time to put my laundry away. A lot of times when we say things like that, it's because we're picking up all this slack in our family that we don't have to be the owners of. Like our Mm. kids are perfectly capable of putting away their own laundry or of packing their own lunches or things like that. And so if there are places where when you come home at night, you can offload so and delegate some of these yeah. tasks to other people in your house, not only are you freeing up time and space so that you can take care of you, you can spend some time working out. You can take a shower without having to jump in and jump <laughs> out. You know, you can sit down and watch a television show when your kids go to bed without having to think about doing the laundry. You can take care of yourself, which is so important. And on top of it, you know, your husband might be like the lost cause at this point, (laughs) but with your kids, you're teaching them the skills that they need to be a responsible roommate, to be a responsible adult, to, to run a household. And I see so often in the homes that I work in, it's very easy for mom to do it all. But the, but the consequence that I see is that mom doesn't take very good care of herself. Right. And she, she denies herself a lot of self-care when she does this. And the other thing is that the kids expect mom to do everything. Well, mom's not going to be there when they go to college mm-hmm. and mom's not going to be there when they, you know, are with a partner or with a spouse later on in life or with a roommate. Like, Hopefully she, not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always that chance. A possibility. But, <laughs> but, you know, I just think that we, we think in the present time, like it's just so much easier for me to do everything myself. But yes. we don't think of the, like I said, the consequence of the, long term. the toll it's taking on mm-hmm. us because we aren't able to take care of ourselves and, the, and that we're denying our kids the opportunity to learn how to do these skills. So those are, those are the things that I would really recommend to mamas when they get home at night, you know, do, do a meal plan, see where you can pare down so that less is more and delegate and involve your family in doing those things. Yeah, no, they're definitely excellent tips. And I hope that my family listens to this (laughs) because that can be totally applied here. Um, Yeah, I know I find with me, like, I totally agree with you as far as, you know, the kids need to take responsibility. And I wish I had started that a little earlier with them because now that they're teenagers, um, they're of their own mind, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they have their own plans and they have their own ideas of how to spend their time, which I want them to be independent in. But, you know, I know like for me, um, when I tell them to do the dishes that, you know, whatever they eat, the rule is, is whatever you eat off of, you have to clean up. Um, I think in my family, we're a little less traditional as far as like when you make meals, like um, I make bulk food 
So we kind of pick at what you want. So like I'll make a bunch of chicken, I'll make a bunch of yams, I'll make a bunch of broccoli or salad and the kids will pick whatever they want to put on their plate type thing. And so whatever they eat, that's what they have to clean up. Or if, you know, we have pizza night too and they eat pizza and I'm like, you can make whatever you want. You just have to clean it up. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> that's a policy role. to have. That's a yeah. great policy. Yeah. But I and love the, go ahead. Uh, any way that you can get them involved to realize that it's, you're part of a whole, like we're a community right. together and we're all contributing to the success of this family. That's what I say to my yeah. kids all the time when they're complaining to me about like, well, why do I have to put my dishes away? Or why do I have to put my laundry away? And this is that my six and my eight year old put their own laundry away. Okay. It's and good. they have been, it's, it's a mess. Like their drawers <laughs> right, are right. not pretty. Like yeah. if people went up and saw, now my eight year old's not so bad. My, my six year old is a hot mess, but, <laughs> but you know, like if people went up and saw their room, they would be like, you're an organizer. But here's the thing. They are responsible. They pick up their own stuff and put it away. It's not pretty. They put mm -hmm. their own laundry away. It's not pretty. But it's the idea that I'm engaging them in the routine. And we'll work on the semantics of it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's also like too, I think a lot of people think um, that their house has to be absolutely perfect. And like the towels need to be folded exactly into, you know, dimensional squares. <laughs> and um, like for me, I'm just like, I feel like the kids at some point will not live in this house. <laughs> and at that point, you know, we're just, we're just surviving until we get to that point where they're able to kind of do what they, you know, can as far as cleaning up and whatnot. So. Yeah. And I think that this epidemic of moms not caring for themselves stems out of this mm. idea that we have to have perfectly folded towels or perfectly organized pantries. And I love that I'm kind of seeing a shift back away from that. Like you were talking about earlier about functionality mm -hmm. over form. And I'm hoping that in that sort of swing back from Pinterest perfect or Instagram worthy, mm. that we're going to start to see this idea that it's okay if when you open my cupboards, it's not perfectly matched, you know, <laughs> glassware and plates everywhere, right, you know, right. because moms are going to be able to start reclaiming some space for themselves because that is something that I'm truly passionate about. Like, I want you to enjoy your family. I want you to enjoy your home and I don't want you to feel like you have to do it all. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we're going to go into the speed round of questions. All right. Are you I'm ready? ready? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, now correct me if I'm wrong. You've done some lip syncing in your day? <laughs> <laughs> I am an avid lip syncer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite song to sing? Quote, oh, my favorite song to sing? Well, be, lip sync uh, or sing. My favorite song to lip sync um, would be, I for my 40th birthday party, I did a lip sync battle and I did um, Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. And I dressed <laughs> up like Lady Gaga in like a silver lame jumpsuit and a blonde wig and everything <laughs> like that. So that's my all time favorite lip sync song that I've done. No meat dress? No. Nope. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> my husband would have loved a meat dress, but yeah, no, no meat dress. I draw a line somewhere. <laughs> Okay, so coffee or tea? Coffee. I like that. Um, most influential person in your life? Oh, deep Holly, question. That's a hard one. Um, I, I'm going to go <laughs> with my mom. Like, that's the first answer that popped into my head. Uh -huh. The reason being is that she was really part of the inspiration for me starting my organizing business. And hmm. since I've been, you know, the last decade of my life, it's been such an important, integral part of my life because she was such a good role model growing up. And she taught me so many of the skills that I've then used in my business, um, you know, on top of just my business and just like, she's a great mom. And I can hope to only be, you know, a fraction of how good of a mom that she was. So really, you know, she's been a huge influence. You're going to have to send this to mom. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite book and why? Okay. So the four tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. Okay. And I'm an obliger if anybody out there has listened, which means that I am very good with holding uh, or other people hold me accountable, but I'm terrible at holding myself accountable, which goes back <laughs> okay. to this idea right, of the coaching, marathon. <laughs> <laughs> my coaching that I need to have constantly. But um, the reason I love it is not only did it change my relationship with my husband and my clients, because now I know where I stand as accountability for them, which is mm -hmm. really important both as an organizer, as a coach, and then as a wife, like I know 
um, sort of the ins and outs of, of what people are expecting as far as accountability. But it changed my relationship with myself because I used to beat myself up that I couldn't just like set a goal mm. and get to it. Like there were certain things I could do, but then there were other things that I was just like, why, why can't I get up and exercise every day? Like, why is it only when I train for a race or when I mm. have somebody going to the gym with me? And then I realized it wasn't that I was wrong. It was just that I was approaching it wrong. And so now that I am like, I have coaches for like literally everything in my <laughs> life, <laughs> I, I feel so much more at ease and so much more productive because I know that it's just about, I need to hire in, uh, outside accountability. So if you are looking to sort of figure out, um, you know, why you can't meet goals or your relationships with other people, I highly recommend it. It was a good book. Good. Good. What is your favorite movie? Uh, Clue. Ah, <laughs> the new it. one or the old uh, one? Uh, the, the old one, 1985. <laughs> I loved that movie. I loved that it had three different endings. Um, <laughs> it's actually on Amazon right now, and I wanted oh, cool. to show it to my kids, and my husband's like, I don't know if it's appropriate for a six <laughs> and an eight-year-old, but yes, that would be my number one favorite. Close second would be Princess Bride. <gasps> yeah. That is my yeah, favorite. Yeah. I actually, my daughter and I sat down and watched it and I, um, what originally I turned it on for them when they were little, like maybe a little younger than your kids. And I completely spoiler alert, forgot about like when she attempts suicide oh, and yeah. like the stabbing of, you know, the, yeah. the uh, six fingered man. And I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> what am I doing to my not, children? Not kid friendly, but yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sure they're good. <laughs> yeah. But so she watched it actually like two weeks ago and, um, yeah, she was kind of funny because she was like, who is this Wesley, Wesley person? <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, you have, just have to watch the movie. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's so my good. favorite. Yeah. Uh, last question. What is your favorite inspirational quote? Oh, um, leap and your net will appear. Ooh. Yeah, That's a good I, uh, one. when I was in college, way back when, uh, we did <laughs> The Artist's Way, which is a book by Julia Cameron. It's sort of a self-study course for creatives. And that that quote has resonated with me for years. And it's this just this idea that um, don't overthink things, trust in your instincts, and just sort of like jump. Because, you know, even if you fail, it, you still at least did it. You don't wonder what, what, what if. So I just, I love that leap and your net will appear. I love that too. I've heard that one. Um, yeah, I like to, like, I just learned a new concept about, um, fa uh, failing forward. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So like, it's not like you're just failing. It's like, you're making attempts to get where you want to be, but because yep. you're failing, you're still going to learn, yep. you know, and learn you from don't the mistakes. Lose, you either win or you learn. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <idea>. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on, Christy. And can you tell people where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to check out the podcast, you can visit cocktailsandcontainers.com. And if you want to connect with me about my business coaching, you can visit businesssavvymama.com or you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at businesssavvymama. Yay. And um, all of the links and everything will be on my Shape It Up page. You can go to shapeitupfitness.com and you can click directly right over there to Christy. And um, any parting words that you would like to leave? Any solid organizing tips you can give? Mamas, you can take care of yourself. You can get your house organized. You can train for a half marathon. You can do it all. <laughs> you just got to make it a priority. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me.